Spencer, in your mindset, just big picture, what allowed you guys to kind of clamp down defensively after whatever you gave up, like 60% shooting in the first half, and then you guys yeah. clamped it down the second? What allowed you to do that? Honestly, I think just a focus and attention to detail. Um, I mean, we, we went to switching one through five um, and, and relied on our, our guards to kind of hold up Rudy a bit, which, you know, had pros and cons. Um, but Nick's obviously phenomenal on the perimeter as well, so he always holds his own regardless of matchup. Um, it's on us to help him. But for the most part, regardless of the defense switch, like it, it really had more to do with focus and attention to detail because 68 points in the first half is just far too much. I don't care, you know what I'm saying, who you're playing. And then... In the overtime, uh, what did you see from their defense that allowed you to manipulate the way you did in overtime? I, mean, I think you were responsible for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean. Well, yeah, I mean, I think um, what happens in the half court is you kind of start to go a little bit of elephant hunting and uh, you just try to manipulate the game. Um, they have some tendencies on their team that we felt like we could exploit. Um, shoot, me and Doe played Rudy in the playoffs last year and phenomenal rim protector. If you can bring him away from the rim and then he's got to come kind of chase the block, then that means like you can kick out to the shooter. So, you know, uh, just, just being familiar with that and understanding how to kind of, you know, orchestrate things in the half court. Because um, obviously in overtime and in, in the fourth quarter, it just kind of gets slower. You know, guys don't, uh, uh, we're not getting as many transition buckets. It's just kind of the way basketball goes. Five stars and double figures. Are you guys got yeah. stops late. I mean, is this kind of with the way the team was envisioned after Kevin and Kyrie, kind of the, the formula almost with, with the balance scoring, the, the defense late games? Um, defensively, I think so, for sure. I think you look at our, our lineup, it's 6'6 six, six to, you know, what is Clack 6'11, right? Um, long, switchable, everybody can guard on the perimeter. Um, you know, then bringing in a guy like Royce, who's a great defender, obviously, off the bench. So defensively, I'd say, like, we knew this was our, our identity. Um, I don't think anybody knew that Mikhail was, was this amazing offensively, uh, just being completely real. And, you know, it's our job to make sure that, you know, he can get to his spots and, and, and get his shots um, and continue to shoot, stack up these 30s um, as, much as, he, as much as he possibly can. we got to feed that and encourage that as much as possible. Um, and then for me, I mean, the, the coach wanted me to just get in the paint. Let the game dictate, you know what I'm saying, what the, what the read is at the time. And, you know, sometimes I make mistakes um, and, and shoot when I should pass or, you know, pass when I should shoot. Um, but overall, the, the mentality is just get in the lane and break down the defense, however we got to do it, whether that's, you know, with pace, whether it's elephant hunting, whether it's pick and roll, whether it's whatever it is, um, and just kind of generate our offense that way. You mentioned playing against Rudy in the playoffs last year. Obviously, Royce would have been that series, too. You know, 12 and 15 tonight. Big time. So what have you just thought of him since you started, since you became his teammate after playing against him for so long? Um, I think um, we, we already knew he was a great defender. We knew he'd do all the hustle things, rebounds, et cetera. I think uh, he's a far better uh, playmaker than we knew uh, just because obviously Donovan had the ball so much and they also had Bogey and, uh, and uh, Conley over there. Um, so I think that's, a, that's another credit and tip to his hat. Um, but the three and D tag, I mean, we already knew he could do that. Um, and playing against him, I mean, he's, we, we knew that. What was your your advantage? You got a you got. A, I think they credited you with a block on that last one on time. Um, yeah. Was that? Now I remember with Trey, you were afraid to go in too hard because yeah. of the foul. Um, with that one, were you? How did you not kind of get caught in between and be afraid to give him? Oh, with, those with that one, I was in front of him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So with the Trey one, it was kind of a swipe from behind because he got a little bit of space uh, on the pump fake from Mikhail. So it was really just kind of like a, ah, let's try it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because um, I saw him open. Um, with this specific play, um, you know, they're obviously going to try to get to Ant. That's, that's their guy. Um, so it was kind of a, uh, you know, delayed double um, because he likes to go left. Um, so just kind of uh, speeding him up. He hit Conley in the corner. CJ uh, stabbed at the ball. Conley had to take a reset dribble, and he was right in front of me, and so I just put my hands up. Um, it, it wasn't like I was trying to, like, you know, get the most phenomenal contest in the world because, again, you don't want to foul, but when somebody's right in front of you, it's easier not to foul versus when you, you know what I'm saying, like you swiping from behind. Anything could happen. You could hit his hair, and it'd be, you know, a foul.